Hello guys, just a few days ago Anthropic released a new version Claude 4, which they claim to be the world's best coding model, and of course I was eager to try it out. And Cursor quickly released Claude 4 options in the model choice, so I gave the same prompt to create a simple Laravel project to four models. Claude 4 Opus with Max mode, and I will explain what Max means at the end of this video. Then Claude 4 Sonnet, which basically replaces Claude 3.7 Sonnet. But I also tried the same prompt with Claude 3.7, and also the fourth model was Gemini 2.5 Pro. And in this video, I will show you the result compared on six criteria for those models. First criteria, did they actually did the job well without errors? Second criteria, visual design for that homepage that I'm creating, am I satisfied visually? Then code quality and critical errors that I saw. Then code quality, kind of debatable things, small details and then speed and cost. And with cost, we'll discuss that max mode separately because the numbers surprised me a lot. Quick kind of side note about Cursor and Claude 4. They released Sonnet 4 in their Cursor IDE 12 minutes after the announcement from Anthropic, which is kind of insane, but which proves that they had access before. They just kind of enabled that feature. On the opposite side, for Windsurf, Anthropic did not give the direct access. This is another tweet and also a tweet by Varun from Windsurf. Since then, they released the access with bring your own API key support. But basically, in AI world, we start to see not only the games between the models and their quality and their speed, but also kind of political games of who can access what, at which time, and since Windsurf is in progress of being sold to OpenAI, which is a direct competitor to Anthropic, one of the criteria for your choice of IDE and models probably will be the ecosystem of what companies are behind them. So that was kind of a side note. Now let's go see the code. First, I will show you the prompt that I gave to four models. So I've installed Laravel project without any starter kit and then opened that in cursor and gave this prompt without any context and without any more details except for my cursor rules, global rules, which define that you should use Laravel 11, Skeleton and all the standards. And first, visual result, what did they produce? This is the result by Claude for Opus the model that they claim to be the world's best coding model. And I asked for specifically Hacker News style design with list of links. And let's open Hacker News and see how it looks. Do you see much difference? Not really, quite impressive. To compare, this was the visual result by Claude for Sonnet. Structurally the same thing, but it's not the same feeling as Hacker News. Then this was the visual result by Claude 3.7 Sonnet. And then finally we have Gemini which feels like totally different and visually not even compared to Hacker News. So if I evaluate the task from visual point of view in the prompt I had, design should be in the style of Hacker News and the new Cloud4 Opus did the best job by far. But of course, this YouTube channel is more about the code than visual design. So in the prompt, I specifically provided to run my great fresh seed as kind of a benchmark to evaluate if it succeeds at all and only one out of four models one shot at it successfully, which was Gemini, which was actually the fastest to give the result, and we'll talk about speed later in this video. Other models struggled with Migrate Fresh, and of course they corrected it pretty quickly, but this is kind of a proof that you need to tell the model to check itself with automated tests or Migrate Fresh. So for example, Claude 4 Opus, if we scroll down, did Migrate Fresh Seed successfully the first time, but later it tried to kind of fix itself to improve something, to update the link seeder with more realistic URLs, and introduced an error, Migrate Fresh Seed failed the second time because Twitter URL with randomizing was incorrect and it had to fix itself, but it did it in just a few seconds and then succeeded. So that was Claude 4 Opus. And this was kind of a small thing, but with Claude Sonnets, with both versions, there was a bigger trouble. Let me show you. So Sonnet 4, my great fair seed, failed with the error base table not found tag tutorial. And the reason was that it generated the pivot table in the wrong order. If we scroll down, it actually apologizes. Laravel is looking for tag tutorial by default, but we create a tutorial tag. So then it called MCP tool contact seven, which I use for documentation and then created the correct migration and asked me to delete the older file, 
which I approved and then migrate fresh succeeded. With Claw 3.7 Sonnet, there was the same error of migrate fresh seed, base table not found, tag tutorial, but the solution was different. So we have an error because the pivot table name doesn't match, so let's fix the model to provide the table name as a parameter. And this is a red flag to me. So instead of using Laravel standards for pivot table naming, it kind of made a duct tape fix hotfix for providing the table name that it had incorrectly generated. Next thing I want to point out is another critical thing, whether the model deletes some of the code. And in this case, two out of four models removed the default factory of Laravel, which was Gemini and surprisingly Claude for Opus. In this case, Sonnet models did better. So as you can see, the cedars are added, but also removed the default factory. This is Gemini. And this is the cedar by Claude 3.7. Sonnet would just add the cedar, but doesn't touch anything that was previously in the cedar file. So I guess you need to always prompt the LLM to not touch anything and not delete any previous code because otherwise as you can see the results may be unpredictable even for better models and then from here all other differences between four models are kind of debatable or small details or personal preferences so for example in the cedar claw 3.7 hard-coded a lot of things like source id and all of that in array and then executed it like this another example gemini just generated the titles and then did all sources but then hard-coded just the youtube urls so in other words the quality of seeding data is different some models went for more precise seeding other models decided to hard code a lot of things and even with the database structure if you don't provide a specific database structure in your prompt or at least the rules then llms will totally improvise so for example sonnet 4 will add slug and description to the tags other models may not add those fields. Some LLMs will call the database table tutorials. Other model may call it links. So yeah, another kind of piece of advice, if you want the database to be with your provided structure, then provide the structure. Then a few more things that I didn't like specifically about Gemini, that it generated all the logic in the routes web without controller. And here's the thought process. It tries to make view welcome. So that's the first weird thing. Other models did try to have separate home blade or index blade or something like that. But in this case, view already exists. So, okay, we will reuse the same welcome blade. So Gemini didn't even bother to create a separate blade or separate controller. Let's just put it all in routes and update the welcome blade. This is not a totally red flag because I prompted just for the home page. So maybe it assumed that this is all I want. It would be just home page and that's it for this project. But this is totally not the way how I would do that. I would create a controller and a view separately. But on the other hand, if we take a look at the criteria of speed, it was actually hard to measure because I had to manually approve all the PHP artisan commands. So the model wasn't really autonomous, just proceeding with the task. But generally, for my kind of feeling, Gemini was twice faster than all the others. But of course, for a reason, as you can see, no controller generated, no separate blade generated. Design style is not hacker news. So it seems like Gemini was cutting corners here and there. From Claude models, 3.7 was actually the slowest. It was thinking quite a lot. Not sure if they slowed it down on their servers intentionally to kind of promote version 4. Maybe that is the reason. But while generating the code, I saw it spinning and spinning and thinking for quite a while. And if we compare Claude 4 Opus versus Sonnet, Opus was slower. So it was kind of thinking deeper, which is kind of expected for that kind of model. But actually, Claude 4 Sonnet is kind of a sweet spot in terms of speed, the quality of the code, and the cost. So this is where we get to kind of final topic, which in this case appears to be the most important criteria. And here I need to explain what in cursor max mode means. So Opus is available only on max mode, which means if we take a look at the documentation of cursor, the explanation is this max mode pricing is calculated based on tokens with cursor charging the model API specifically with the API price, not with cursor AI requests. Plus it adds 20% margin for cursor. So what happened to me in cursor when I launched Cloud4 Opus prompt is this. In the list of usage events, you see Cloud4 Opus running and running and running with the amount of requests, basically for each code that was generated or requested. Do you see how long is the list? 
so it ends here. And in total, it used 234 credits from my cursor AI requests. If we try to convert that to dollars, cursor say that one request is equal to four cents because it's $20 per month, which gives you 500 requests. So that converts to $9.33 for one prompt to Claude 4 Opus. To compare other models, as you see here, took only two requests for Claude Point 7, Gemini two requests, Claude 4 Sonnet only one request. So the price difference is enormous and incomparable. But this is not because of Claude Opus, it's because how Cursor charges you on max mode, basically it charges the API. So this is roughly a similar price, like you would use Claude API directly from your custom application that you would code for yourself. So with that in mind, you can see that Cursor pricing of $20 per month is kind of a bargain because they have the deals with the AI providers, with the models to get those requests cheaper and a bit more optimized probably internally. So does it mean that we should not use Opus? Not really. It's just that this simple project is not the right type of task for the model. Even on the same pricing page of Cursor, they emphasize that Max is best for complex reasoning, hard bugs and agentic tasks which means that for those cases, those $9 prompts would make sense, would pay off, and you would probably gladly pay that money instead of hiring someone for hundreds of dollars. But for what they call normal everyday coding tasks, this is where Claude for Sonnet with regular pricing per request does a great job. So my overall kind of conclusion from this video, what I will use in the future is Claude 4 Sonnet. For quite a while, I've been using Gemini 2.5 Pro as my main model, and I was pretty happy with it. It was on par with 3.7 Sonnet. Just Gemini was faster and I was happy about it, but now Claude 4 kind of raised the bar, it feels like. Of course, again, it's quite a simple test. If you made a head-to-head -head comparison yourself and you have different results, of course, we can discuss in the comments. But in short, I think Claude 4 will become the new state of the art, at least for now. But it all, again, may change in months or even weeks. So I will keep experimenting and I will keep shooting these videos on this YouTube channel. But for now, that's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.